So in this problem, we have two separate streams entering a heat exchanger. We have air up top going through a compressor, entering the heat exchanger, exchanging heat with this cold water on the bottom here, and then finally exiting through another compressor. We're asked to find the total power of both compressors, which I'm going to call W total. And that's going to be some number in kilowatts. And we're also asked to find the mass flow rate of that cold water. So I'm going to call it M dot W is equal to some number, and that's going to be in kilograms per second. So first off, to find that W total, we're going to have to find the work or the power of each compressor. So it's going to be the power of compressor A plus the power of compressor B. So now to find these two power units for both A and B, I'm going to do an energy balance over each compressor. So first we're going to do the energy balance over compressor A. So if we do that, we'll have zero is equal to Q minus W heat transfer minus power plus m dot inlet h inlet minus m dot exit h exit which is of course the enthalpy so now if you just rearrange this formula you can see that the heat transfer is going to be equal to zero because we're told that heat transfer is basically neglected and then you bring the w to the other side so you'll have power of compressor a is going to be equal to m dot of the air h1 minus h2 or inlet minus exit. So now we can start plugging in our numbers. So we'll have the power of compressor A is equal to, and we're given uh, 0 0.6 kilograms per second. So 0 0.6 times, and then H1 is going to be um, one bar and 300 Kelvin. So now if we turn to table A22, properties of air, and we go to 300 Kelvin, we'll have the enthalpy at 300.19 kilojoules per kilogram. Go back to your formula here and you plug it in, 300.19 minus, and now to find H2, uh, or the exit, I guess, we have to go to 600 Kelvin. So once again, you go to A22, and you go to 600 Kelvin, and you'll have 607.02 as your enthalpy. So 607.02. And if you plug this into your calculator, you'll have that the compressor A has negative 184.1 kilowatts of power. So now we're gonna do the same thing for compressor B. So at B, you're gonna have zero is equal to Q minus W plus MIHI minus MEHE, -E, mass flow rate times enthalpy. And once again, you can cancel out that heat transfer and the MI is gonna be equal to ME. So you'll have that the heat transfer, or sorry, the power at B is going to be equal to M dot times H1 minus HE once again, except this time you're going to be looking at state 3 and state 4 instead of state 1 and state 2. So with that being said, you can plug in your numbers. So you have uh, compressor B, power of compressor B is going to be equal to 0 0.6, and that's kilojoules, or sorry, kilograms per second times H1, or H3, I should say, H inlet. So you have 450 Kelvin, so you have to turn the property table, turn to A22, go to 450 Kelvin, and you'll have 451.8 kilojoules per kilogram. So 451.8 minus the exit, which is 800 Kelvin. So you go to the next page of A22, go to 800 Kelvin, you have 821.95, and we can subtract 821.95 close the bracket plug it in your calculator and you'll have negative 222.1 kilowatts so now when we go back up here to our total work or total power formula you can plug in your numbers and you'll just have this equal to negative 184.1 kilowatts plus negative 222.1 kilowatts and you'll have it equal to negative 406.2 kilowatts. And that's the answer to part A. All right, so now for part B, you have to find that mass flow rate of the water. So you're, you can just do an energy balance over this entire heat exchanger. So you'll have that zero is equal to Q minus W plus, and then you have the mass flow rates that are coming in. So it's going to be uh, MI, HI, and it's actually the summation of MIHI minus the summation of MEHE, which is the mass flow rates entering times enthalpies entering and minus the mass flow rates exiting uh, times the enthalpies exiting. Sorry, that's a mouthful. 
So now if you break this down further, you have 0 is equal to Q minus W plus, and now you have to look at what's entering that ED exchanger. So you have an M dot 2, H2. As you can see, you have uh, the 2 entering over here. And then you're going to also add M dot 5, H5. As you can see, it enters here. Now you subtract those exits. So you have M dot 3, H3 over here, and also M dot four, or sorry, M dot six, H6. So now to take this step further, you have no heat transfer and you have no power. It should have been a power dot above that W because you have no working shaft here and there's just no heat exchange uh, with this heat exchanger and the surroundings. So now we can solve for either M dot five or M dot six because they're the same thing. So if you do that, I'm just going to solve for m.5, and you'll have that m.5 is equal to m.2 times h3 minus h2. And all of that is going to be divided by h5 minus h6. And if you're struggling to figure out how I got rid of that m.6, just remember that m.5 is equal to m.6, so you can replace that m.6 here with a 5 and solve accordingly and same thing with m.2 and m.3 they're also equal to each other so you can just set m.3 equal to m.2 do a substitution and then you'll just have one other mass flow rate besides the unknown which is going to be m.2 and we do have that right up here so let's actually just go ahead and plug in what we have so if i set this equal to m.2 was 0 0.6 0 0.6 kilograms per second times h3 which we already solved for was 451.8 kilojoules per kilogram uh, minus h2 which we also solved for was 607.02 kilojoules per kilogram divide all of that by h5 minus h6 so we don't have either h5 or h6 so let's go ahead and pull those from the property table so h5 you have 20 degrees celsius and uh, one bar. So to turn to the property table, go to 20 degrees Celsius, and of course you have to be in the saturated water tables, and then you just pull the saturated liquid um, specific enthalpy is 83.96. So you go back here, and we have 83.96. Sorry about that zero getting deleted. Minus H6, which is simply just going to be 30 degrees Celsius and also one bar so we're going to go back to this table over here just go to 30 degrees celsius right over here and you're going to have 125.79 so minus 125.79 plug all this into a calculator and you'll have that the mass flow rate at five which is equal to the mass flow rate at six which is also equal to the mass flow rate of the cold water so just put w is equal to 2.23 kilograms per second.